Everything was going so fast. It's a life which at this moment you have to drop off. I wanted to stop, I wanted to give up. The emergency, everyone was super worried. Motherhood was helping me to continue to dance. A symbol of grace and feminine beauty, ballet is the picture of pure elegance, an undeniable representation of strength, power, and determination. The same could be said for mothers and pregnant women, each experiencing their version of what it means to be or become a parent. So how do these two fit together? Angel and demon. One is saying, it's okay, you're just pregnant. Another side who's saying, your career is going to go off. What happens when the road to a career as a dancer intersects with the road to motherhood? Will I be able to be a mother, being a principal dancer? To understand the triumphs and challenges which new mothers might face as ballerinas, we've taken a step into the lives of five of the world's leading principal dancers. It's this question, do I get the same level what I left? From pregnancy to parenthood, get a first look at how these dancers balance their private and professional lives, finding the path from ballerina to ballerina mother. I think I needed a little time to realize that, okay, I'm gonna push, and then I'm gonna be a mother. Pregnancy is often full of uncertainties. How will I feel? How will my body change? What can I eat? What are the complications that can arise? What types of exercises are safe? And most importantly, what happens next? To be honest, with the uh, first pregnancy, it was a shock. I felt I'm young, I'm not ready for this. Joy, fear, excitement, panic. I think this mother is being born immediately with a hormone, with a feeling. One is how happy you are, and second, how you get uh, protective. Expecting mothers are usually told to take it easy. But for dancers, taking it easy isn't always possible. I found that I was pregnant in the morning and I was dancing Dong in the evening, and I fainted. Oh, it is so hard, this mentality of the dancer. I'm getting anxious, it's like, oh my God, how am I going to get back in shape? It's going to be so hard. Dancers use their body in the same way musicians use their instruments. In order to perform, they have to keep their instrument in tune. For this reason, ballerinas face a highly physical workload. In a normal week, dancers attend a daily class of 75 to 90 minutes before heading into five to six hours of rehearsal six days a week. On top of their training, a professional dancer can perform up to three or four times each week. I'm scared I'm not going to do anything right. I'm scared I'm not going to be a good mother because I'll be too much at the ballet. And I'm scared I'm not going to be a good dancer anymore because I'm too much at home. Groomed from a young age to develop strength and flexibility, ballerinas are often hyper aware when it comes to their bodies. You have to be very focused on yourself, on your body, on your performance, on what you eat or how much you slept. To become a ballerina, most dancers undergo eight to 10 years of training with little time for much else. Bali, it's a hard education. People who come to audience to watch, they see just the top of the iceberg, right? Some dancers start as young as three or four, but serious ballet training mostly begins between ages seven and 10. By the time a student is 15 years old, they are taking anywhere from 10 to 15 classes per week. You went and born doing a split or being, having ponchos, so you have to bend your muscles, stretch your ligaments. There's so much of willing to be a dancer, and it's not just physical work. You're fighting daily mental problems. Because it's painful, then you need discipline, and you need a really, really strong uh, mental, really strong brain. <laughs> I would say you just like a machine, you know? And I saw it as something emotion, and I saw that this is my way of express feelings, my way of speaking, and I had to follow this way. Mm -hmm. 
The professional career of a ballerina spans from about age 18 to 40, depending on injury and personal factors. During this time frame, women who desire to become pregnant are faced with another aspect of their reality. A woman's peak reproductive years are between the late teens and late 20s. I'm not sure if I always wanted to be a mother. In my 20s, I didn't think about it. I was really, really career-focused. I wanted to be principal dancer, that's for sure. By age 30, fertility, or the ability to get pregnant, starts to decline. This decline happens faster between the ages of 35 and 40. Something changed around 30 years old. I was so obsessed with getting pregnant. I even had to like uh, call out on the ballet that I couldn't dance because I was crying all the time. What does this mean for dancers? The lifespan of their career occurs during the same time as their reproductive years. And they were like pushing me towards having a surrogate. And <laughs> because I'm really stubborn, stubborn, I was like, no, I'm gonna have this baby, I'm gonna carry this baby. And they're like, you know, with your type of body, we're not sure it's gonna work. Fertility experts have found that around 18% of women dealing with infertility are high-performance athletes, with ballerinas falling under this category. We are a little bit too skinny. That makes having a baby really hard and carrying a baby really hard. In one study, the percent body fat of a diverse group of ballerinas ranged from 7.8 to 24%. Since a woman needs 22% body fat to ovulate and become pregnant, this proves that ballet dancers are more likely to experience fertility struggles than non-dancers. It was a big, a big slap in my face because as a ballet dancer, we make our body so performant. And suddenly somebody was telling me that my body was actually not good for the job. Ballet is undeniably based on aesthetics. So while body changes can take a toll on anyone, this sensitive subject is particularly relevant to ballerinas. I was thinking till the last moment that it's super scary. Of course, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to lose the shape. I'm going to gain 25 kilos. Yeah, having a more female body, it's an experience that I, I'm enjoying. I, I didn't have most of the changes that a, a woman goes through. The roles we're playing on stage, we're dancing on stage, are mainly young girls. A dancer can expect to gain 25 to 35 pounds, or around 15 kilograms during pregnancy. You hard training for this body, like to be in shape, and it was sometimes difficult. My boyfriend says that he still can see muscles of my stomach, what is true, but as you understand, <laughs> it doesn't change that much of my feelings, but yeah. I didn't ex accept myself, I, I wanted to like immediately uh, go away from this body. No, obviously my body was changing a lot and I put on weight and well, there's, there's a stomach that came out at the moment, but uh, I not really enjoyed to, to be pregnant as my first pregnancy. I would say I didn't care so much uh, about what people think because I felt great. <laughs> weight gain and body changes can affect their balance and posture, causing them to have to adjust the technique they've worked their whole lives to achieve. There is also an increase in flexibility. This is due to a hormone called relaxin, which helps to loosen up the ligaments to prepare for birth. Added flexibility might seem like an advantage for a dancer, but in reality, what it means is that they now have to take extra care not to overstretch for risk of injury. It's not uncommon for women to stay active during pregnancy. During pregnancy, you can't build any muscle. You just to make a circulation of blood to feel just the joy. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention encourages at least 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity each week. To this, dancers are no exception. Studies have shown that dancing through pregnancy can support both a mother's physical and emotional health. I enjoyed so much dancing without perfection expectations. Every day I have to be perfect and I was like, I don't have to be perfect, I just have to enjoy dancing. I'm sharing this with the human growing inside me. The many benefits of exercising while pregnant include reduced pain, better sleep, and higher energy levels. 
The most common forms of exercise for pregnant ballet dancers are a relaxed ballet bar or Pilates class. But words like relaxed simply go against the nature of most ballet dancers. It was a fear of losing shape. In the same time, there was a struggle as a mother, and it's always a fear of uh, if I'm going to keep the shape, that I'm going to uh, lose the pregnancy. I can understand because we are giving 100%. But when you're pregnant, you can't give it 100%. You important it's a baby. Oh, yeah. Baby really moving and it's actually so beautiful feeling that um, uh, like somebody living inside and they're just like saying hi, hi. <laughs> As is expected, the closer a dancer gets to their due date, the more time they take away from the studio. With time away, pressure can occur and cause a dancer to fear losing their contract or their job altogether. This fear, it's like, I think it's also something what doesn't let me enjoy of, the preg of pregnancy. When you add this to the already existing stress a ballerina feels to perform at her highest possible level, it becomes an increasingly challenging time to navigate. The hormones are crazy. <laughs> it's just so difficult to cope with. This is a little bit overwhelming <laughs> because there's so many options. I've heard from so many women. They're so happy to be pregnant and it feels so nice that I hate it. But I'm really looking forward to meet my little girl. So now it's uh, 4 a.m. still and uh, I have a, a contraction. Uh, I'm really nervous a little bit. Let's go. For childbirth, the intensity of pain and duration of labor is different for everyone. The nine months I enjoy of being pregnant, but the birth. <laughs> Well, the day I gave birth, I know how painful it was. I know what I did. I know what I said because of the pain. But if you ask me to describe the pain, I can't. Ballet is known to strengthen the core and pelvic muscles, both of which have an effect on labor. Some studies show that, due to a strong pelvic floor, dancers can have shorter or easier births. However, other studies show that a pelvic wall so muscular can also work against you. In one study, scientists found that 45% more force was required for elite athletes to deliver a baby when compared to non-athletes. I always say myself, if I manage the birth, I manage this too, because uh, it, it's like an exam for you. Yeah, she's adorable, and um, it happened in six hours. The labor was very quick and very intense. So I cannot believe that uh, my girl is here with me. I'm a mother now. <laughs> That's just crazy. Every woman who goes through labor has her own unique experience, and while staying active can have many positive effects, there is no proven study to confirm whether ballerinas have harder or easier births. Hello there. This is Lila. She was born yesterday. She did a fantastic job during birth. She came out super quickly and uh, I mean, the first part was really, really long and painful, but from then it went super fast and smoothly, and I really enjoyed her giving breath. It was really uh, fast, and uh, we went at 4 a.m., like 4 something, and then doctor was uh, checking me, and she said, like, oh, it's already 6 uh, centimeters open, so soon will be a uh, baby coming. They had to like give me a minute because I was crying and they're like, are you okay? Everything's okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm just, it's, it's coming. Um, and that's, that's the moment where I, it was, I don't know. I think I needed, everything was going so fast. I think I needed a little time to realize that, okay, I'm going to push and then I'm going to be a mother. Mm -hmm. And that was, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm still crying. <laughs> Going home. 
With a new life comes new joys, perspectives, commitments, challenges, and sometimes fears. When I went back to work, um, I cried the whole way. So, that's my first day going back to work and um, having the baby at home. <laughs> For this reason, taking time away from the stage, even for something as monumental as having a child, can feel like a daunting task. While postpartum recovery takes on average four to six weeks, some dancers may return to physical activity within a few days of giving birth, with their doctor's permission. I think social media can can bring like a sort of a pressure to to be back uh, super in shape super quickly. I don't know how, how they do it, and I don't, I'm not sure it's an extra pressure I have to put on myself on the top of the regular pressure, which is uh, already uh, quite, uh, uh, quite there. Coming back to work for ballerinas means getting back in shape, back in the spotlight. You're nervous that they criticize or you're not good enough for this. It's my first day to come back. I'm in the theater, I just arrived it. Yeah, I'm really excited and a little bit nervous because of uh, a lot of people and uh, yeah, <laughs> but I'm happy to be back. First month, you just gave birth, you're fine. Second month, the same. Third month, it's why people start to look at you like, yeah, you know, like now it's time to be back. Aside from the usual symptoms after giving birth, like depleted muscles, less stamina, and a loss of strength, ballerinas often face an added pressure to get back to performing. Your whole body changes, like my balance. My balance is really different. My ankles are different. Like my weight is different. So I jump differently. I take off from the jump differently. It's just the amount of work that I have to do now is scary. Actually, you know, when, when I was like sharing my social media. I've got so many messages from mothers who are in nuns and who were like in absolutely sa the same situation. I'm like, yeah, it's so hard, it's painful, and I don't believe it's gonna happen ever, that I can get back. It feels still weak. And also I'm afraid of hip injuries, which are often happening after pregnancy. I kind of don't believe it, I created the acoustic. While it is possible to return sooner, it is recommended that dancers wait up to six weeks before returning to their training. Day four, baby sleepwalk. I know it's very difficult and it's mental difficult because sometimes you want to give up because it's not possible uh, to bring yourself back how it was before. It's really hard because um, people are expecting a mature woman, a mother, to look like a 14 years old young girl. And um, I am wonder, do I really need to go back to a body that looks like a 14 years old? Several studies have shown that with a child, women often experience fears about their job, such as discrimination in the workplace, worse job opportunities, limited chances for promotions and leadership positions, or inflexible work schedules. One study from Harvard University found that, for women, competency ratings were 10% lower for mothers compared to non-mothers among otherwise equal candidates. For dancers, the very nature of their work schedule can make this transition back to the stage very difficult. When I look at my days and what I used to do, I used to uh, do cross train a lot, doing Pilates, working out, getting physiotherapy, like all the time. But now I just can't spend all the time cross training on me when I need to take care of human life, you know. Ballerinas work extremely long hours, training and rehearsing on an almost daily basis. I'm alone in San Francisco Valley and I am trying to work, but someone doesn't want to let me and needed a little snack, so I'm taking a little break. <laughs> when it comes time to perform, it means that they will be in the theater working late into the evening, often not able to get home before midnight. Each time I feel uh, <laughs> sad to leave her. I don't know if I can be both, I don't know if I want to be both. Switching between dressing room and stage is harder than back way. Like when I come from the stage, it's feeding, sleeping, what's happening? But opposite, it's, it's hard for me. Like I'm staying and I'm thinking, okay, I have to now like concentrate on the moment, but your thoughts are in, uh, 
is the kid. This alone can put strain on a new mother. When combined with the pressure they feel to perform at their very best, it can be a difficult balance and cause fear or uncertainty, both as a dancer and as a mother. Of course, uh, when I give birth and you see this uh, beautiful kid and you think, do I need to come back to my job or I want to stay with this baby. And I was saying to myself, if I need it, I stay. Or if I need it to stop, I will stop. If the transition of going back to work after pregnancy is too long, they might tell me, well, you know, you know, that's it. Questions number one, how is it going to affect my career? Employment contracts for female dancers vary depending on the opera house or theater, each providing different lengths of protection. However, this protection only lasts as long as the contract. Because I'm a principal dancer, I, I do feel secure about my career. But in America, um, it's a one-year contract only, so that means every year you can be fired. Maternity protection laws prevent women from being fired directly after birth and give them the right to paid maternity leave. These laws apply worldwide in varying degrees, except in a total of eight countries, including the United States. While it varies from state to state, paid maternity leave is not guaranteed in the U.S., which results in many new mothers using annual vacation time for this purpose. In other countries, paternal laws provide flexibility to take an extended amount of time, with Sweden at the helm offering up to 15 months of paid leave for new parents. Everything has a it time. And if this is the time of the baby, it's a time of baby. And then will be time of ballet. Before I got pregnant, I wanted to stop. I wanted to give up. Motherhood was helping me to continue to dance. This is a special example, but a child can put things into perspective. I feel much more balanced than I felt ever in my life. To be busy with the kids, to be reality that you are human. This is bring me back and make me balance. Especially in a career with such demands as professional ballet. And before I was just punishing, punishing, punishing. Oh, you're not good enough here, you're not good enough there. When you just dance, 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 you, you get depressed from this because you, you can't do anything, like just sitting at home or crying. It can maybe separate a bit more uh, private and, uh, and professional life than, than I have done so far. There is a lot of contradictions, a lot of fears, but it's so worth it. And I can't wait the moment when I'm gonna come back home after a show. Having a child can have many effects on a person's career, but according to these dancers, it also deepened their relationship to ballet. After you become a mother, you will dance better. Some quality will lose, but some other much more important quality we get. I'm sure it's a plus. Also, it's super hard, so it's one more experience of overcoming something hard. It's exactly this instinct, the feeling, what hard to understand before you give birth. Some extra woman secrets opens. <laughs> I think I became kinder for myself. Now I'm trying to see more positive things in my life than I used to see. You know what I'm trying, I do see them, actually. I'm not forcing myself. I'm so happy to, to go on stage and to feel this moment. I wish earlier one day I had seen a documentary or anything with a famous ballerina, principal dancer, having a baby and talking about it and telling me yeah, it's hard, you know, you might struggle at the beginning, but it's doable, and you'll be the happiest person, and you'll maybe even be a better dancer. <laughs> Boy, so this is my new lunch break at the belly. The second 
I was prepared. <laughs> And if I had had an example of somebody being a mother, and I've seen that early when I was younger, I probably would have had a baby earlier. So. <coughs> Get a drink slowly. Get a drink slowly. You're drinking too fast. You're drinking too fast.